Hello, my name is Tammy Miller. In this galvanic cells video, we're going to identify the direction of electron flow in a galvanic cell. To identify the direction of electron flow in a galvanic cell, there are a couple of things that we need to understand. First, the two electrodes of my galvanic cell are going to be connected by a current carrying wire. This allows the current to flow between the two electrodes. The next thing I need to think about is how those electrons flow between the two electrodes along that wire. Electrons are liberated at the anode. Liberated means that they're being released, so this is where oxidation is occurring. Once they are liberated, they can travel away from the anode toward the cathode. Once the electrons reach the cathode, they will be used for reduction at the cathode. In a galvanic cell, it is important to note that the anode is always going to be considered negative. This is because a galvanic cell is spontaneous and electrons being negative, will spontaneously flow away from that negative charge. The cathode, on the other hand, is considered positive as the electrons, which are negatively charged, will be attracted to this positively charged cathode. So they will spontaneously flow toward that positive charge. To identify the direction of electron flow in an electrolytic cell, we first need to identify the two electrodes. We need to identify the anode where oxidation is going to occur. And we need to identify the cathode where reduction is going to occur. Electrons will always flow from the anode to the cathode. This will never change. A great way to remember this is that electrons always flow alphabetically. This means that the electrons will always flow from the anode to the cathode. Let's look at an example where we need to determine the anode and the cathode to determine the direction of electron flow. Use the table of standard reduction potentials to answer the following question. Label the anode, cathode, and direction of electron flow in the following galvanic cell. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the electrodes that are immersed in the solution of my galvanic cell. And I notice that both electrodes are platinum. As discussed in predict whether an electrode is reactive or inert, platinum electrodes are inert electrodes. This means that I need to look at the reactions that I'm given below. So I'm going to start with my left part of the cell. When I look at the left side, I see that iron 3 is going to iron 2. So I need to look at my table to find iron. And I see that iron has a reduction potential of positive 0.771. Next, I look at the right side of my cell, and I see that I have hydrogen ions going to hydrogen gas. When I look at my table, I see that hydrogen has a reduction potential of zero. The more positive reduction potential is more likely to be reduced. This means that it will be the cathode. So iron has the higher reduction potential. And therefore, the left side of my cell will be the cathode where reduction is occurring. For this reduction reaction, iron three ions are gaining an electron and being reduced to iron two ions. This means that the right side of my cell is going to be the anode where oxidation occurs. In this reaction, we have our hydrogen gas losing electrons and going to two hydrogen ions. Now that we have determined 
the anode and the cathode, we can determine the direction that our electrons will flow. Since electrons always flow alphabetically from anode to cathode, our electrons will flow from the right side of this galvanic cell to the left side of this galvanic cell. Identification of the anode in the cathode in a galvanic cell will always help us to determine the direction that electrons are flowing since they always flow alphabetically.